everyone, my name is Laura, this is my channel Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, which is a very special video because today I will be joined by... Hello! My husband! So this is Brennan, he has appeared on a video once or twice before, but today we are going to be doing something that I think is really cool and I'm really excited to hear him talk about. So, Brennan is a map maker, he is a cartographer. Yeah. Tell us about it. Uh, so I'm studying geography in uh, school right now um, as one of my majors and uh, part of that major requires that we work with GIS, Geographic Information Systems, so we do a lot of um, cartography with that because a good map needs both uh, good data and good artistic representation. So. That sounds very sciencey. <laughs> so basically, what I'm going to be having Brennan do with this well-rounded knowledge that he has learned across the three and a half years he has completed so far of study is he's going to be judging fantasy world maps in books. <laughs> Books. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I read them. One of my favorite things as a kid was looking at uh, the maps in books and oh, then yeah. like constantly referencing it, going back and forth yeah. when they would uh, make mention of like a city or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I always loved Narnia's maps. Mm, um, good map. And oh, Aragon's. Uh, oh my word! I even have Aragon. Yeah, Aragon's map was like big and like. <laughs> It also it made me want to add it to the list. <laughs> well, it, it was so big because like you could see places that they like in the first book you didn't get to see. Like you, you're like, oh, when is this going to come into play? So mm -hmm. it was almost like a little trailer, a little sneak peek <laughs> for what was coming next. All right. Well, other than Aragon, I have six books here that I'm going to have Brennan judge, and the first one we're going to be starting with is. Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo, the Grishaverse map. So this is the map that I will have Brennan be judging if you don't own a copy or your copy for some reason doesn't have a map. All right, All right Brennan. So I am somewhat familiar with um, this because of the show that we watched together. Shadow and Bone, the TV show, of course. So one thing I'm already noticing is one, uh, the balance is a little sparse, like the land areas don't have a lot of features to them. So all of the maps that we're going to be looking today are a very specific type of map. They're called reference maps. They don't have any sort of data that they're analyzing or looking at. They're just a reference so that you can look at it. Um, but there are some things here. So like Kenster Hurt here, um, that should be haloed or positioned in a better way because you can see how it overlaps with the landmass and it gets a little confusing and difficult to read. Besides that, uh, it's pretty decent. I, I think the, the one other thing that's not doing it a great amount of service is you have these beautiful, lovely, detailed borders around it. But then you have these maps that are very plain and empty. So when you have figure ground problems like that, your eyes are more drawn to the borders than to the map itself. So um, yeah, I, I've, I've seen better maps. Um, <laughs> well, and of course, like what you were saying with the whole grayscale thing too, is that this book has sprayed black edges. And so that just even gives it almost another border because everything around it is so mm -hmm. dark. Mm -hmm. um, but all right. Go start, go start. Do I give it like um, a, a rating <laughs> or anything? You can if you want. You want to rate this map? Yeah, I'll do it out of the cardinal direction. So I'll give it a, a, I'll give it a two out of the four cardinal directions. Uh, north and right. east, the bad ones. <laughs> no, I'm just in They're okay. all good. So the next book that we have is Car of All by Stephanie Garber. So I read this trilogy and I loved it, and there is currently a whole other series that is coming out with it. Now this is a very different map because it's of a town. Hmm, okay. So 
So, what do we think? So one thing I'm looking here at is so this, um, an important thing about map making, I think, is that we've come to learn um, maps as very Western. And we've come to see maps as very Western and a very specific style of map being the only one true map mm. uh, and the only one true way of mapping. And mapping has a very long um, history of colonialism and used for um, resource extraction. If, you, if Europeans went to a place, they used maps to extract wealth out of that place. And so what we as geographers are trying to do more now is look at new and different ways of mapping. And so this, this, I think, does a pretty good job of that. This is almost more like a mental map or a, a community map. These, those are types of maps where I ask you, hey, can you just draw me a map? Like you're not a cartographer or, or anything, but just draw me a map. And that shows, while it isn't exact, like to scale or anything like that, what that shows me is what's important to you. And so from this, there's or a lot of what's important to the book. <laughs> exactly. So like with this book, there's a lot of features here that are unmarked, a um, lot of scales that are a little like all over a place. It's kind of a whimsical book. It's very like whimsical. That. So the map has to match. <laughs> but I can tell what the character or what this book believes to be important because we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six things that are labeled, and that's it. And I, and I do enjoy the blocky kind of style and um, the angle that it's going for. Um, all in all, I, I like it. It's a good good map. I give it. Um, Colonel directions. Yeah. <laughs> I'd give it a uh, three and a half out of four. Wow. I like it. It's so it's simple. Mean? It's simple, but it does what it needs to do. All right. All right. I know the next map. I'm excited for it. <laughs> Sabriel. <laughs> yes. So the next one that we are going to do is Sabriel, which is a book in a trilogy that also has other books in the world by Garth Nix that we both love. So he is much more familiar with this book. This one's the first the book, map. yeah? Yeah, this is the first yeah, book. Yeah. The map is actually only on one page. It's literally just this. It's, it's a little small, but what I think this map does well is, for one, it provides scale, which is really <laughs> neat. Uh, it gives you cardinal directions, which is always nice. It is, it, it does make me think of England with the name, um, and particularly the font that they used. And I think that's well, kind of... an Australian of, author, so... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just a solid, good reference map. Like, they have... Um, all of the features that they used, like the lines for roads, that's pretty typical. And then, um, like, it's getting, conveying a lot of information, um, like, uh, and labeling things really well. Like, you don't see a lot of, um, conflict with the labels and the features. Um, one thing I'll note is what they do, he does real well is, um, things that are on the coast um he he labels those what you should do when you have a city on the coast you always always put the name of that city in the ocean to show that that's on the coast if you put it in the um if you put it on land then you know that okay it looks like it's on the coast but it's not it's not on the coast um, so he's done that with, uh, Caliba, Nisto, but that one's a bit confusing because I don't know if Hello Sholo and Nesto are to what they're referring to, but, um, yeah, yeah. All in all, good map. I'm, I might be a little biased cause I really love this book. Um, <laughs> just based on the map, just based on the map, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, it would be kind of cool, it would be kind of cool if there was an inset map. So if this was a real life map, I would put a, an inset map right here. Uh, that's a locator map 
so like I know where in the world this is. Um, so you do this for, so I do a lot of maps of Africa and unfortunately uh, a lot of people don't know where like Burundi is or Djibouti is. So I usually have to put a locator map in like the corner and this would be kind of cool to see where in the fictional world this is. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. it makes sense for his story because it, there's they not, leave. they don't ever leave and there's no real mention of mm -hmm. the outside world belong maybe, besides the old kingdom and the Maybe it's kingdom. unexplored and that's why we don't get that. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, the third book makes mention of those, uh, the, oh. the refugees from the mainland. It's, it, it, it's hinting at a, a alternate universe <laughs> in the European context. Yeah, so what is your Cardinal Direction rating? I'd give it I 3.75. I don't give up, out <laughs> fours, typically. I, I always yeah, think there's more. Yeah, you're getting mighty close. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, what's the next one? Next one? Mm-hmm. Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Wim. So I loved this duology when I read it. It's a Mulan plus um, this is the one where she... Project Runway. Yeah, Project Runway, but like she's really good at sewing. Yeah, and yeah. she has magical scissors to help her. Uh-huh. So, it is a double-paged oh. map. And a whole island, and... It's a little difficult with the spine. Yeah, but... the spine does make it a little tricky, but let's see. Okay. I feel like I need a music stand to just kind of... So one thing that they've done well is the difference between sans serif and serif. So it's, um, that's a font thing. Um, <laughs> so serif, uh, when you have serif on your fonts, that implies that it's a natural phenomenon. You're labeling something that's natural. So we have the Forgotten Isles of Lapazur or the Tajin Sea. That's a natural thing. But then with the, the Winter Palace, uh, uh, the, it's uh, Sans Serif. So that's a good touch. Um, I like that things are not, it's not nadir, so it's not directly above. It's kind of off kilter. Mm. Um, and a lot of la labels. You can see that what they've done um, is they've done something called a halo for all the um, labels that are in um, on the landmass uh, because they don't want it um, kind of getting jumbled together with things. Like it's easier to see them because they stand out. Exactly. So halo. halo, you put like a little bit of color, usually white, around your letters, um, and that that prevents it from um, the letters from being lost in like the trees, in like the Doha forest, uh, it would have gotten lost. Um, now I will say typically in map making, you don't want to halo everything. <laughs> Um, that's kind of a, a, an easy out that most map makers look at that and go, eh, you, you could have done better. Um, so Do they halo everything? They halo everything that's in the um, landmass, uh. which is kind of understandable because of the grayscale texture that so they used, used, and they do have a lot of labels. Um, they do... Ooh, what I like, too, is... With the the rivers and the mountains, they actually give the labels a little bit of curvature to it, um, which implies a a, a, a relationship uh, to like the not the the way it actually is and stuff like that. Whereas like cities, it's all straight. Um, yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. It's pretty solid. Some nice creative licenses and artistic representation. You can tell a lot about the world, like the moon crying into a pool and um, uh, and this desert has the sun and stuff like that. So 
There's there's some nice little touches here. And anyone who has read the book, just so you know, Brennan has not read majority of these books. So the fact that you point out some of the most important elements of the book... That's good map get, making! She has to get the tears of the moon... That's and good map making! catch the rays of the sun! <laughs> That's good map making! <laughs> and like blood of the stars, so... Alright, 3.75. 3. Oh my god. So next up is a book called The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. So I just read the second book in this trilogy and the third one. Uh, will come out hopefully sometime next year. Inshallah. Inshallah. So, so this is the map of Oterra. Alright, let me get a good look at this. It's so, it's again, you have a little bit of a problem with the, the grayscale. Grayscale is hard to pull off, and I'm, I have a lot of respect to uh, these, these books who have to use grayscale because of uh, budget We're and stuff like printing. that. Are you kidding me? There's yeah, no exactly. way printing. So it, they ha, gotta ha. do it grayscale, but you can kind of see a problem with grayscale where you have a slightly darker gray for the ocean and then you have um, like a lighter gray for the land and it's it can be trickier to focus on the land. What I do like about um, what they try to do to increase that um, visibility and increase the focus is they actually um, create shadows along the coast and um, do an outlining, a thicker outlining of the coast. Uh, that helps a lot. I And I, I like that the with the unknown lands it's very dark so your eyes are naturally drawn to it. Cardinal direction is good. I might have put the um, title Otra like over here and shifted things down a bit because you're you're this is actually the last place your eye naturally goes to your eyes there's an optical center it's not in the very center it's slightly above the center and then your eyes drift this way um so this is in the last place you look um just naturally so i would have probably maybe put it here and then you could have seen it um, quicker. I will say the that the castles look like they they're clip art that they kind of just put on. Um, I think they might they don't look very well integrated into the map. I think that's good. Mountains are good. Um, yeah. Right. Cardinal directions. I I give it a three. The, the you gotta say the cardinal directions. Uh, I'll give it a. Uh, a west, a south, and an east. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't put their label in the, in north, the north. Their title in the north. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Alright, so we have one more book here right. for you. So Best this for is a standalone. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> this is a standalone sapphic witchy book. I was actually kind of surprised that there was a map in this book, to be honest. Um, but this is the map. So it's Sweet and Better Magic mm -hmm. by Adrian Tooley. I should say that. This one has a lot going on. Give me give me just a <laughs> second to digest this. I might hmm. <laughs> I might have not done the the road is like textured so that it's like just uh, grayer than everything else. Um, I might have changed that to just some sort of line, but it, I get, I get why they did that because it doesn't look like they're, they have any hard lines anywhere besides the coast and the textures for the sea. They, they chose a good font, um, for, oh, that's interesting. Okay, so <laughs> I've not read this book. What I'm getting from this is you have your cities and your like man-made stuff. Then you have these little stars that are a different um, font and um, they're much more witchy. So just going off that, I think these are like magic, like wellsprings or something, um, some sort of something important there. I like the trees. The trees are a good, good type. 
Um, yay for the trees. Yay for our trees. Right. Yeah, and then classic little, like, flaggy things. Um, I It's very old school European style, mm. um, which works for it. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a witchy book. Yes, yes, yes. So it, it fits. It's a Western witchy book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I kind of wish with the Gilded ones they had done a little bit... The Gilded... Sorry, not to go back to the Gilded ones, but the Gilded ones is an African story, yeah? Not particular. Not particular? Never mind. All right, I think there to... are some West African influences in the story. Yeah, and I just wish I had seen that a little bit more in the maps. The map. Like, mm. particularly the I castles. Believe, the castles... Like I believe the Minofarna is... Western African and while this book isn't explicitly West African mythology or anything like that there Where are definitely it elements Imag it's in Oterra okay so it's a ima it's an imaginary place uh-huh um but there are elements of it that are similar to elements I've read in other books that pull from uh African mythology West mm -hmm. specifically Nigerian mythology mm -hmm. um so there are similar I elements see. but it's not yeah but it's not enough to classify it as an african story an african story i think our main character is from she's from the south but her family is from the north or something like that so she is darker skinned yeah so she is still seen as an outsider as many africans are seen as outsiders in the united states of america a lot of the castles like some of these castles just look very european like they have the ramparts and the flags and and that's why I said they look like they're kind of clip art because they just look like they're popped on there. And and some of them even even the angle looks different at which they're placed versus yeah. the angle that we have of the Yeah. And and there are like like African things that you could use there or it one or two of them look like a little bit like... Oh, I'm sorry, I was wrong. She comes from the north, but her mother was from mm -hmm. the south. No, Some of them south. do kind of look like slave castles, like Elmina Castle. Mm, well, the women are kind of more so. It's a very, like, uh -huh. war between genders type book. Interesting. And only just in the second book have we started to get into, like, queer gender and things like that. Mm. And even still, it's very, like, briefly mentioned. Oh, um, that's interesting, because... so. Fun, fun fact about Nigerian mythology and stuff like that, and also Nigerian ideas of sexuality. So the spirits don't have a gender. They're gender fluid and stuff mm. like that. Um, and for a long time, like Hausa did not have a word, specific word for woman or man. Um, a woman was some someone who walked with a sway, <laughs> and man was, uh, in, in Hausa, was someone who walked straight. And stuff like that. So their Nigerian mythology, Nigerian understandings of gender is very gender fluid, very fluid. and stuff. Oh, that, that's so un cool. Until colonialism and now Nigerian culture Sounds and like... is very, very <laughs> conservative. Sounds like we'll have to do another video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we previously did a video uh, featuring African literature, but that was more so about authors and books and things like mm -hmm. that. But yeah, maybe I'll make you read an African mythology fantasy. That'd be fun. And it'd be really interesting mm -hmm. to hear your thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, so for those of you who didn't see that video, we do give context for this in that video. I'll have it linked like up above and down below. But Brendan was actually born in Jos, Nigeria, and he grew up in Nigeria, Niger, Ghana. So his background actually is in West Africa, which is mm -hmm. why that is what he leans towards. Like when you said you make African maps, you were making maps of your home. Yeah. And when you were excited about the possibility of African or West African mythology, mm -hmm. so that is why. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But yeah. I feel bad because we kind of skipped over yeah, uh, Sweet and Bitter Magic. Well, I think this is a pretty decent map. For no directions? Mm-hmm. I'd give it three and a half, I think. Wow, you rated it, all of these very highly. Actually, three. It's a little busy for my taste. It's just a little busy. Okay. Um, but it's it's a good map. I don't think any of these are bad maps. Yeah, do you think that actual cartographers made these maps? Or do you, like... Ooh. 
or were they That's just authors question. and publishers who somehow got it all right? I think you can, I think they're authors and publishers because I can still see like some things where it's like, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Like the, all the halos and stuff like that, mm -hmm. where a... They do it because it's intuitive, not because they've studied maps to know to do it or do it properly. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, we can't see the letters good. I'll just halo it all. And it's like that, like I TA for GIS and that is the first solution that m my students come up with is we'll just halo it all <laughs> and uh you're like ah yes uh, no. No. So, <laughs> the last thing that i want to ask you mm -hmm. is what is something that you would like to see in a bookish map or want them to do better in bookish maps all right so i think overall like the maps are in a good spot they mm -hmm. do what they need to do what I think I would like more of is maps throughout the book oh. because what is really disruptive is when you're reading a book and they mention like Terrera and you're like where the where the heck? can I swear on your podcast <laughs> or your no where the heck uh, <laughs> is Terrera and then you have to okay fine 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 Oh, it's there and they're there. Oh, that's a long journey. And it's very disruptive, I think, to the actual reading process to have to go back and check, look through the map. Mm -hmm. It pulls you out of the, um, the experience. But if you have maps scattered throughout, like kind of like them checking, looking at their map themselves, the characters mm -hmm. looking at the maps themselves, I think that would be a lot more helpful. Oh, that would be cool if mm -hmm. we had it whenever the characters checked or whenever a new place was mentioned. Sure. Too. Because you, it doesn't make too much sense if it's just randomly scattered throughout. Sure. That could almost also be seen as disruptive if yeah. you don't need it. But if a new place was mentioned or they are traveling to a new area, you could have almost like the main map at the beginning of the book. And then if they're traveling north later on in the book, you can have just the northern map, almost mm -hmm. like a different, like, zoomed-in map, more mm -hmm. specifically of where they're trying to go. That way you don't get it too busy of a map uh -huh. in the beginning, but you're also getting the detail that you would love. Mm -hmm. I could travel. I could see, like, if it's a, a journey sort of adventure or something like that, mm -hmm. you could maybe have maps, like, uh, not every chapter, that would get a little disruptive, but, like, Every like every couple of chapters. Every couple of chapters, like where they are mm. and stuff like that. That would um, that would actually be mm. yeah, kind of fun. Yeah. Or even like as like chapter headers. So or not headers, but you know how when it says yeah, like that, chapter that's blank, what I'm thinking. like not take up an entire page, but like right below it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was exactly what I was thinking. Cool. Then a completely unrealistic, but this would be cool. <laughs> Um, is, so like I said, I do GIS, um, so we do a lot of data and data analysis and it can be really interesting, really useful to map out problems, map out demographics and stuff like that. So all the books that we looked at today, all their maps were reference maps, but there are, there are a thousand different types of maps. It'd be really cool if we had like a book of just fantasy maps, GIS maps. So like Harry Potter and there's a map of w where all the wizards are and, uh, or like uh, the functionings of the uh, uh, wizard government and stuff that, like that. Yeah, like that what, if, what if, what if the wizard government had a annual or a, a, a decentennial uh, census like we do and they and then you have all that data like JK Rowling should it shouldn't be like trashing trans people she should be like doing like s really getting nitty-gritty and uh oh my goodness yeah I don't think any author is actually gonna like, go for that though because that's too much that is too much but there's someone out there there's a big big nerd out there that can make you. me census data of all the fantasy books out there. 
And then I'll make the maps from those. We'll partner up. All right. Well, thank mm -hmm. you very much for doing this video with me. I had a lot of fun. I hope you had a lot of fun as well. I did. <laughs> like I said, uh, Brennan has come onto this channel before to do And I might topics, come again. And he might come again. And if you have any ideas of what you would want him to talk about with books, uh, just based off of the little snippets of his background that we've given you, comment them down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Otherwise, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Everything on here is bookish content, and I post twice a week on Sundays and Wednesdays. And I also have bookish social media linked down below that you can follow me, see what I am reading, get updates on us, all the fun things. So until we see you all in our next video, we wish you happy reading. Happy reading.